All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect right here, right now, with the first female DJ to ever grace the streets of New York City. We got DJ Baby D live on the line. How are you doing this evening? How you doing? I'm doing real good. I gotta say, I'm doing great, and first and foremost, it is an honor just to be able to have such a legendary hip-hop pioneer like yourself on my radio station this evening, so thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time this evening. Thank you. But I want to take you back to the very beginning, and I gotta ask you, what actually inspired you to get into the music industry initially? Well, um, I went to a park with my friend, I was young then, and um, I seen Flash before he was Grandmaster Flash, you know, he was just Flash. And I was watching him, and I was like, wow, that is what I want to do. I, I, I want to do that. I want to DJ. So that, that's how I started. And I, could, I couldn't imagine just being able to see Grandmaster Flash before he was Flash live in person. Like, like I know like back then it must have been so cool seeing something like that, because back in the day there wasn't a lot of DJs because hip-hop was really just starting out. Right, well, Herc was out, Theodore was out, Flash was out. You know, there was a couple of them out, but they just didn't have the titles like Grandmaster, you know, and things like that. But um, he was the first one that I actually seen in person. Like, I listened to the radio and everything, and I always liked singing because my family, you know, they were into gospel and they sing and everything. But um, that right there was like something just totally different, and it just wowed me. And I have to ask, like that night when you actually seen Grand, like uh, seen Flash for the first time, did you get the opportunity to meet him, or was it just one of those like concerts where after after the show he kind of like dipped? He was it was out in the park when we were doing our park jam, and he was out in the park. So you know, I couldn't even think to even go say hi because like I didn't know him then. So you know, I I didn't want to you know intrude or anything like that. So me and my friends just stood there gawking. <laughs> And I also read as well that you were actually taught to scratch by the legendary Grand Wizard Theodore. Theodore, I was wondering, how did yourself and Theodore initially get connected? And of course, what was it like just being mentored by him? Um, first and foremost, uh, my friend Curtis, he used to give basement parties around um, James Monroe High School. So I used to go to his house and I, I, you know, he initially, you know, honed me in on the ones and twos. So I kind of taught myself, and I was doing it myself. But then I met Theodore. Now, the way I met Theodore was Curtis and Theodore was having a battle, you know, in the house party or whatever. And, you know, just like to say, Curtis, you still lost. <laughs> anyway, MC Smiley was there, and I was like, wow, there's a, another female MC. Because I've heard Shaw, but I, I've never heard Smiley. And she was looking at me like, Wow, that's that's a female DJ. So you know, we did our thing and everything. That she came up to me and asked me what I'd like to come, you know, with her over to Theodore's house. And I was like, yes. So you know, I met Theodore, and she was like, this is the girl I was telling you about. And um, Theodore had his ones and twos up, and um, he said, well, go ahead, get on it. So I got on it. So I started doing my thing, and he was like, no, try it this way, relax, you know, do it this way. And so I started honing in my skills from there. And also as well, I remember reading as well that Theodore is actually the inventor of the scratching technique. So you, you learned from the best right there. You learned from the originator how, how to do it. If, you know, back then it's not a how you do it. It's just you just did it. You know, either you can do it or, or you don't. Some people are self-taught. Some people can absorb things. I absorbed it. I watched them. I listened. And it went from there. And also as well, aside from being the first female DJ to grace the streets of New York, you were actually well, um, one of the members of the first all-female hip-hop group as well, titled the, the, the Mercedes Ladies. I was wondering, how, how did the rest of your, yourself and those ladies get connected? And of course, what's the story behind that a pioneering group? Um, how the Mercedes Ladies, I'll take it to the beginning. Sherry Cher, R.D. Smiley, Tracy T., and... Oh, she's going to kill me. There was another one, but I, I can't remember her name. Um, but it was four of them that started the Mercedes Ladies crew. So they started out as a crew. I did not know them then. And then um, I was in Theodore's house, and Trevor came over. I believe he was cousins to the old brothers. I'm not sure. And he said, I am starting an all-female MC DJ crew. I would like you to join. And I was like, well, 
you know, who are they? You know, what are you talking about? He was like, well, the name is Mercedes Lady, so their name is Mercedes Ladies. And I was like, okay, I'm down. So he took me across the street to his house, and that's where I met Sherry and R.D. Smiley and Eva Def and Zena Z, along with Tracy T. And the other young lady, she's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll probably understand. Like, when I was doing my research for the interview, I read that it was, like, in 1976 when – everything everything forms so I, i'm sure she'll probably she'll probably understand judging by uh, how many years has passed has i sorry has actually passed all right well she she's still gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> the last interview i remember this interview you know I, i'm like blame it on the uh drugs i guess you know the antihistamine <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can always blame it on myself as well, cause I'm I, I dug in the crates for these, you know what I mean. So you can always bl you can always blame it on a mortal over here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but any, you know, anyway, you know, I met them there. You know, it, it was kind of intimidating, cause you know I'm like shorter than the rest of the girls. I'm looking at them, and they looking at me. And mind you, um, MC Smiley, she was a part of Mercedes Ladies, but she was there for like one day, and then she just she still was there for the very first jam we did. Um. And our very first jam together, first female, we set foot in 63 Park. And, you know, they're, you know, looking out, they were a little intimidated because that's a man's world, you know. And, and who are these females? Who are they going to do? So we went up there and just blew it out the park. And the one thing, the one thing I have to ask is pertaining to the Mercedes ladies and yourself as uh, DJ Baby D. I, I have to ask, if you don't mind me asking, like back back in the day, as you said, kind of like back in those days, hip hop was mainly for men, right? Like, were they, were they really accepting of you, ladies, or did they were they kind of like ah, like you know what I mean, or like did you guys have to earn your place, or they open kind of open up like open arms with you guys? We definitely had to earn our spot. There were some guys that already knew us, you know, knew R.D. Smiley, you know, the guys from the Nod and everything. They knew some of them already. Me, fairly new, except for the crew that I knew back at James Monroe High School and theater. So, but um, it was a male-dominated thing. And um, the ones that didn't know you, even the people who, that just came to jam in a park, they're looking like, hmm, what are they going to do? Look at these females. They better sound good. Because I mean, like, you, you, somebody like Melly Mel and, and all of them just like barking on that bike and just like, hey, I'm Carol. But yeah, we fooled them. Sherry just, just, okay, this is us. This is who we are. This is what we're going to do. And we just knocked it out the park. And then I was more like a double jeopardy. But when um, R.D. Smiley got on and she was DJing, I would also start MCing. And also, as well, in the early 1980s, the Mercedes ladies were actually featured on Donald D's uh, Don's Groove record. I was wondering, how did you how did you guys get connected with Donald D? And of course, what was it like collaborating with him? Okay, um, I knew Donald D um, before uh, the rest of the girls did, but I hadn't left. I decided that you know my time is up here; it's time to venture on to do something else. They went and they done um, Donald's Groove, but it, it's still like a it wasn't nothing too hard or too ah, uh, you know, because we knew them. We knew Flash. They knew Flash. So they, they were very comfortable, you know, doing it. So while they were doing Donald's Groove, on the other side, I was doing No Sense, my own rap record. And I got to say as well, Donald is such a phenomenal individual as well. Like, I had the opportunity to interview him, I believe it was last year, and one, one of the most nicest individuals I probably ever, ever met. So I just got to give a shout out to Donald D when, when we have, while we're actually live on the air. Okay, let me stop you there. There's two Donald D. This Donald D, he passed away. The Donald D that you're talking about, I know him too. Phenomenal, excellent dude. I mean, love him. Hey, Donald. <laughs> but the Donald D that they did the Donald Groove with, he passed away a few years ago. Like they always say, you learn something new every day. I do want to say... Um, I know I'm probably a lot, uh, very many, very very many years late, but just my, my sincere condolences to your friend and, of course, to his family as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you. And also, in 1984, you actually released the project No Sense. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about that project. And of course, is it still circulating the internet to be purchased today? Because I do know some of those old records, unfortunately, sometimes get lost get lost in the crates. Yeah, they, they do get lost. Um, what I did was uh, didn't intend to do anything. I, I just, like I said, I just uh, separated myself from the Sadie's Ladies. And um, I met Spider D. I used to hang 
around um, hang up at the office with Russell Simmons and Curtis Blow. And they used to DJ for Curtis Blow as well. So um, Russell Simmons introduced me to Spider D. So Spider D said, I have this song I want to do. It, it's for a single uh, um, artist. Because he had Sparky D, and I cannot remember the name of the group she was in. I think it's not the Us Girls, but it was something Girls. Um, and Sparky D is a beast. Shout out to you, Sparky D. She's a minister now, phenomenal woman. Um, so I, I met Spider D, and he told me that. And I said, okay, I'm down for it. Read the lyrics and everything. And I said, okay. was a little iffy because it was on, you know, the heartbeat, the Tanya Gardner's um, song. And it's been sampled so much, and I was like, ah, uh, but okay, let's let's do this. And um, we we did no sense. And I gotta say as well, that is a, that is a phenomenal project as well. I, I I gotta ask. I know it's been quite a few years since that release. Do you think you ever might do a new a no sense part two? I did do a no sense part two. There's a no sense that you know this just don't make no kind of sense. That's the one where you hear me talking in the beginning. The second no sense. You'll hear Mercedes Lays because I went back. I said, I need to do something with my sisters. And this one has a male on it. And he comes out, part me, sweetheart, don't mean no offense, but I kind of heard you say it don't make sense. And then we go back with and forward. And um, the one, the no sense part two that's circulating on the internet, if anybody wants to hear it, is on YouTube. Um, it was remixed by DJ Ozzy Boy from Australia, phenomenal guy. He remixed it, and you'll hear Mercedes Lady. Then you'll hear the guy. Then you'll hear me. And I, you know, I wrote that. Spider D wrote the first No Sense. I wrote the second. And I definitely got to go back to the archives and actually check that song out because I, I've, I've listened to No Sense Part One, but I actually did not know there's a Part Two. So it's going to give me something to look forward to and listen to this evening. Right. If you, I thought I sent that to you. If you, the the, the Part Two has the male, and then you hear me. The No Sense is just me. So Mercedes Ladies is on No Sense Part 2. And um, like I said, you can go on YouTube and, you know, type in the board No Sense DJ Ozzy Boy. That's, I mean, he, he just – the things that DJs can do with an old record is phenomenal, and he kicked it out the box with it. And also, in 1991, you actually dropped the album uh, ESP. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners the story and inspiration behind that phenomenal record. Okay, that wasn't me. That's a different Devorah, and she is in England. So it's two of us by the name of Devorah, and people confuse her with me and me with her. Well, I got to say, good good thing I, I did bring that up, because that way individuals that do listen to this interview can actually know for, from future experiences. Right. The one that's pure singing, and she's from England, and her name is Devorah. And, you know, when I found out about her, I was like, hang on. There's somebody with my name. And, you know, I went and I, I looked up some of her music. And I was like, I like this. And uh, my sister, Bobby Gooden, she lives in England. So I was like, you got to find this girl. Look it up, look it up. And she did. And that's how I heard all of her music. So she's a phenomenal artist as well. And also moving into the 2000s, in 2004, you were actually inducted into the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. I was wondering if you could tell our listeners a bit more about that. And, of course, how does it feel to actually be in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame? Well, unfortunately, I didn't make it to the show, but it felt really good. I felt honored because for a while I was like, did they forget about us? Because they seemed to be talking about Salt and Pepper. And, you know, even I sit back and have to wonder, did they forget about Sequence as well? You know, because we're the first females that hit the streets with the hip-hop. Sequence is the first females that made a rap record. So sometimes people get that confused. They think that Sequence was actually the first females period. No, it was Mercedes Lady, but it was Sequence who did the first female, all-female rap record. And they need to have their dues, too. So at that time, I was sitting back thinking, you know, they, they forget about us. What is going on? And then, you know, I uh, got a phone call, and I was told by um, then her name was Liz Banks. She was part of Mercedes Lady, too, another phenomenal um, female. Her name is DJ Flam now, and she does holy hip-hop. So her radio show comes on on Wednesdays in the morning. But she let me know that this was going on, and I just felt like, wow. I I, I just sat there for a minute, you know, because I was in the mess hall then, you know, on Camp Lejeune in the Marine Corps. And I was like, you know, how do, how do I really feel? I was like happy, a little sad, like, wow, you just did this. And, you know, but overall, I'm happy it happened because, you know, as people are 
talking about the history of hip hop and everything. I'm like, they keep forgetting these little things. I'm like, why do you keep forgetting the females? And Mercedes ladies was a, uh, uh, we had our foot on the foundation and it kind of saddened me that when they talk, they forget about us. So that, that was phenomenal for me. And I gotta say, I'm I'm glad that an, that an amazing individual like yourself got recognized, because like you said, you got you guys are the first people to do it, so you guys most definitely deserve to be recognized in every award show when it comes to hip hop. In my personal opinion, right, right, we we definitely you know we we paid our dues. I mean, the shows that we did. I mean, we did shows with Grandmaster Flash and Fury Five. We did shows with the L Brothers. We did shows with Tony. Cr- I mean, we did a lot of shows, and I'm like. How come when they get interviewed, how come y'all not mentioning the same ladies? You know, that I, I had a little talk with Scorpio, and he said, sometimes it's out of sight and out of mind. And I was like, you know what, he's kind of right. Because when, when I left altogether, I moved to um, Quantico. I married a Marine. I thought family first because I had gotten pregnant. So I married a Marine, and after that, I joined the military. You know, me and him broke up. I moved to Hawaii. I stayed there for a while. And I met my current husband now, 30 years. And he just kept saying, you know, you know, he found out who I was. Like, at first, he didn't believe me. So I called him LL Cool J when I was in Hawaii. And he was like, what's up? What's up? What's up? And I told him, you know. And so I put my husband on the phone, and LL, you know, kind of let him know. My husband was, like, flabbergasted. Like, why aren't you doing something now? You know, hip-hop is, is this huge thing now. But a lot of people got to understand, you know, like Sean Rock said, you know, when – when you leave and you do something like we did and you got a family and everything, sometimes something's got to get put on the back burner. And unfortunately, that part of my life did. But when I came back, it was like everything comes flooding back. And I'm like, okay, it's time, you know. So it's time for me to get out there. And this is me. This is what I did. This is Mercedes Ladies. This is what I did. You know, Sherry Sher wrote, you know, Mercedes Ladies uh, book. It's her story. It's her um, account of what went on. So, you know, each of us have our own accounts. That's hers. So, you know, if if uh, you can, you want to go out there, you want to read a little bit about how she viewed everything, go ahead and pick up her book, Sherry Share, um, Mercedes Ladies, her story. And she also just dropped a single. I don't know if I told you that or gave you that one, but she just did. And it's Sherry Share. And going back uh, here for a few moments, when you actually said that they were thinking about salt and pepper and whatnot, like, like I said, I am glad they recognized you because if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be no Spinderella. Well, I think Spinderella, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure exactly when her timeline is, but I think Spinderella would have been Spinderella whether I was there or not. So I think um, that was the time when women were like, I like this. You know, I want to do this too. Like, there's the lady loves. You know, a lot of people, she has her own radio station, and... At one time, a lot of people really didn't know about Lady Love, and then she was like, oh, that's not going to happen. She comes out, she's making her noise, you know. There was Spinderella, her noise was loud because she was with um, Salt and Pepper, and she's doing her thing. So back then, a lot of women started coming out, and, like, the bulk of them started coming out in the 80s. And also, as well, I actually saw that you actually received the Hip Hop Culture Award for Years of Outstanding Achievement. I just got to first and foremost say congratulations on winning that award. And, of course, like, were, were you actually there in attendance? And who was, who was also nominated alongside you? Actually, I don't know about that one. And if that happened, no one told me. <laughs> so that's something I'm going to have to go back and ask somebody. Um, I was told that there was another award, but never really, you know, the person never really got back with me. Cause, like, you got to understand. I was in Japan, I was in Hawaii, I was moving all over the place with the military. Um, I know there was an award that Sherry, she received. Sherry Sher got that one, and then it was uh, um, inducted in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Um, that one, that one could be the first one that Sherry accepted, and it's uh, mind-blowing, actually. But it would be nice, you know, to like, now that people are, are knowing who I am, they start reaching out to me personally. And also as well, other than the book that's out that you actually talked about and whatnot, uh, what is next for yourself, DJ Baby D? Like, is, do you have any new music coming out? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote? Well, we stop you here, live on the Canadian airwaves. Okay, um, actually, 
actually, I'm getting myself together. I got my decks and everything, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into that DJ and I'm, I'm doing it the way you guys do it now because I'm still used to the ones and twos, which is very different from how you guys DJ today. So I'm, I'm learning myself on that. Um, with R.D. Smiley, we were thinking about pinning a song. So we're in the talk and um, looking at music, looking at different things. You know, Sherry, she's doing different things. Um, what I would like is for Mercedes ladies as a whole to come back, but don't actually know um, what each female is doing. Like um, one, Miss P, her son um, actually is in an ongoing series called Snowfall. So, you know, she's busy with that. Um, I have another one, uh, another sister, Sai. Sai, she is an aerobic teacher. So she does that. Um, so we each are doing our thing. Uh, it's just getting everybody together. But like I said, me and RG, we've been talking a lot, and we are really looking at pinning something and getting something out there. So you just might be hearing from us really soon. And I got to say, us hip-hop heads, I don't think we can complain about that. I think we're actually most definitely going to look forward to hearing some brand new DJ Baby D and, of course, the Mercedes ladies. Thank you. Thank you. But also, Baby D, this is a time in the interview quickly that I give a chance for the individual right before we wrap things up. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. But most of all, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated. Everything, DJ Baby D and, of course, the Mercedes ladies as a group. Right. I'm on Facebook, and it's uh, Deborah Myers. Um, on Twitter, is DJ Baby D. Instagram, you'll see DJ Baby D, Mercedes Ladies. And I would like to give a shout-out to some people in Canada, because I know people in Canada, and yes, I'm kind of a geek, so I do play the game EverQuest, and, like, I'm on, I'm AFK now. We're supposed to be raiding, but I like to say hi to, um, uh, oh, and then, um, oh, my God, Miss Swank. Today, I'm just not really in it with all the names. Carol, hey, Palm 2. <laughs> uh, tell us, there's a couple of people in Canada that I do know. And I like to say hello to all of them. And I like Canadians. I mean, you guys are really nice, like a breath of fresh air. I got to miss, sometimes we are. Sometimes you do run into the common arsehole, like, you know, it, 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 like, like every country does. But for the most part, we're pretty laid back. Yeah, I, I've always said, if I'm running from America, I'm heading towards Canada. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? Maybe, I can't complain, you know, having a legendary DJ move to the country. You know, make sure you bring them ones and twos as well. <laughs> I, You know what? I would. I would definitely do that. You know, it, it's an honor. It's a pleasure. And I'm going to go there soon because I'm going to visit some people there soon. Sounds great, but I gotta say, DJ Baby D, thank you so much for just taking the time out of your busy evening and coming on and coming on ninety seven point seven at Live Radio FM. And I just gotta say as well, thank you for paving the way for so many other legendary and amazing DJs. You started, you started something that is still going on today. So I just want to be able to give you your flowers and say thank you for just creating something amazing because at the end of the day, you were the first individual to do it out in New York. So you definitely sparked something that is still going on today. Yes. Yes, indeed. And I, I, we, if, if we, you know, when we talk about it now, we just never thought that it would become this big. I mean, there's some things we're like a little on about, like I'm still trying to get into the bumble wrap thing, but you know, um, the way we did it then, the way they're doing it now is like, you know, things change with the times and everything. And sometimes I, I sit back and I, I do want to hear something new, but, but with the old school feel, without all the cussing. <laughs> I most definitely agree. There is still some real hip hop out there from new artists, but you just got to dig, unfortunately, now. It's, it's almost like finding a needle in a haystack, but once you find that one artist, it, it, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air. It gets you away from that this new mainstream, I don't know, what I don't really know what to call it, but uh, I can't call it hip-hop. <laughs> right, well, you know, the problem with that is um, it, it's the audience, it's the people. If you keep going out and, and you, you keep buying that and you keep doing that, that's what they're going to keep giving you. Now, if you turn around, a lot of people start, like you said, digging, you know, for the old-school feel type rap and, and start demanding to hear that, start want you know, hey, DJ, can you play this? When are you going to play that at that's when that things will take a turn. But for now, you know, it's supply and demand. There's a lot more demand for what's out now versus what is more appealing.
appealing as an old school but with a, a new school feel. So it's up to you guys, you know, what you what you uh, demand is what will be supplied. And I definitely agree. We here at 97.7, I don't play any of that new mumble stuff. I actually, uh, I do play new music, but it has to have that real hip-hop flow. Like, on my station, I, I want to preserve the hip-hop culture. I want to make sure that we bring back the elements of the hip-hop culture. So when it comes to underground artists, I really screen their music. If I hear any auto-tune, I don't accept it. I want real rugged raw, real hip-hop that, that still tries to preserve the elements of the hip-hop culture. Right, right. You know what? Get with um. There's this group called the DJ Information Group on um, on Facebook. Um, Square Knot, DJ Square Knot. They're very good at at um, interviewing up and coming rappers that have the old school with the new school feel, and it's not mumble and it's not auto tune. And and they're a very good group to get with. You know, and they share information like that, so you can get up on the news bed, you know, needle in a haystack, and like. Hey, anything new or whatever, you know, you can try that. Hey, I most definitely will, you know what I mean? If, if, if it make my job as a DJ easier, then I most definitely will slide on through and check them out. Okay, all right. I got to say, though, DJ Baby D, thank you so much for just taking the time out of your busy evening and coming on the radio station. It was an honor and most definitely a privilege, and hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, good night, everyone. Good night and have yourself a wonderful night.